Hi, Gina here. So a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about how to extract a table from a PDF. Now a natural next question is, well, what if my table isn't an image? And so in today's tutorial, we're going to be walking through how to take an image that contains a table and turn it into a useful tabular data asset. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. So for this example, I'm going to be using this sample image of a table from this educational website, mrkremerscience.com. And so take this table or some other sort of image of a table that you want to work with. And I'm going to right click. Then hit save image as. And then save. And now we're going to go parse it in Pipeline Builder. So from wherever you are in Foundry, you're going to hit Control-J and search for Pipeline Builder. And so you're going to click on it. And you're going to hit New Pipeline. You're going to give it a name. Parsing a table from an image. And you're going to hit Select Location. And it's going to be in your learning project. And now you're going to hit Create Pipeline. So from here, you're going to hit Upload from your computer. And you're going to hit Cheese from your computer. And we're going to be grabbing Data Table Example number one, or whatever you called it when you downloaded it. Upload to a new media set. And then hit Upload. And now you're going to hit Done. And then right click on this to rename this for organization. So table, image of table. And now we're going to parse it. So first thing we're going to do is hit Transform. Now you're going to right away notice that something is different here. So Pipeline Builder has changed slightly since the last video that I made on this topic. Historically, you've had to do a transformation before doing anything else called convert media set to table rows. Now you don't have to do that anymore. And so here, you can put your media set straight away into many different operations in Pipeline Builder, like PDF text extraction or text extraction from an image, which is what we're doing now. So again, if it looks different, that's because it is. So again, you can use the operations that you would normally use on a media set but right away without that intermediate step. So you're going to search for extract text from image. Last time we did extract text from PDF, it's a little different. And here we're gonna choose the layout aware option. The media reference is going to be media reference. So you'll see that Pipeline Builder essentially listed out the properties that we're going to have from this media set, even though we didn't explicitly convert it to a table. So media reference. For error handling, you're going to keep it as fail. For the output format, use full extract. Languages is English, and that's it. And the output is called extracted content. And now we're going to hit apply. So here in the output table, we have an array. We're going to have to explode our array. So we're going to search for explode array. There we go. And the expression is going to be extracted content. And the output is going to be called extracted content. And now we have a struct. So in this struct, we have the block index, the block ID, the block type, the block content. This may look very familiar to what we did with the PDF. You'll see here that we had two elements in this array. That's because we have two different blocks in this image. One is text and one is a table. So now we're going to flatten our struct. So you're going to search for flatten struct. The expression, we're going to go to columns, extracted content, and then hit apply. And now we have unpacked our struct, and you'll see that we have two blocks. We have a block type, so one text, that's essentially the table title. We have the table itself, and we have the content. Now let's take a look at this content. So if I right click it and hit view cell content and wrap the lines, you'll see here that we have the start of the table. 
we have the header row. Now, I'm going to be mostly ignoring that header row and just filling in the headers manually, but that's our header row. And you can see that the header row starts and ends about here. There's actually two header rows, which is part of what makes this a little bit trickier. And then we have the row start. So that table row means that we're starting a row. And then TD, you can think of those like delimiters between columns, so table data. And that's what we're going to use to parse our data into a data set. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to chop this up into different rows. And so we're going to search for let string. And the string that we're splitting is going to be content. Now the pattern that we're going to be splitting on, first we're going to divide the rows into different rows. And so we're going to be looking for this pattern specifically. So we're going to grab that. So the pattern is this limit, no limit here. The output is going to be called split string. That's perfectly fine. And so now we have to explode it before we can actually see our results. So next up, we're going to explode. The array that we're exploding is split string. The result, I'm going to call this content. So we're overwriting our old column. And now I'm going to hit apply. And you'll see here, now I have a number of rows. Now, one of these is not a table, so I'm going to get rid of that block. So you'll see that we have our rows. They're pretty uniform looking. Now, my next order of business is I want to get rid of these two rows because this is not table data. These are our headers, which again are going to be a little hard to put to use. And then this one again, that's the title of the table. So I'm just going to totally filter out that block. So here we're going to say filter, so filter rows, and we're going to be removing rows where the block index is zero. We don't want that because that's just the title. And we're going to say or the content, and we're going to say regex find. So we're going to look for that thing that indicates a table header and just get rid of it. So that looks like. And now we're going to hit apply. And now we're just left with our data. Wonderful. So now we're going to split this out into columns. And so once again, we're going to search for split string. And now the expression is content, of course. The pattern that we're looking for it is like so. So this is table data. It's going to be very consistent. And now we're going to hit apply. And now to properly identify what we did here, we're going to have to explode this. And so now, instead of exploding, we're going to split out the array elements into columns. But before we do that, let's clean it up. So we want to get rid of these sorts of characters. So we're going to search for transform array elements so we can clean these up. So transform array element. And we're going to be looking at the array split string and the expression to be applying. So that first thing is we're going to be doing a regex replace. So we're going to search for regex replace. And now the expression is going to be the array elements, the pattern. So we're going to be looking for two patterns. We're going to do them one after the other. So the first one is going to be TD. And that's just going to get rid of that leading string. And we're replacing it with nothing. Very good. So this is going to be stored in transform array element. And now I'm going to hit apply. And now that worked wonderfully. So now we have this slightly cleaner array. Now the next thing that we're going to do is the same operation essentially, but we're just going to get rid of these characters at the end. So as a shortcut here, I'm going to hit duplicate and edit. Now instead of the pattern being this one, the pattern I'm going to be looking for is this ending string. And I'm going to use this syntax to also get everything after that pattern. 
and I'm going to be replacing it with nothing. Now, just make sure before you hit apply that you're replacing split string with transform array element. So you're actually transforming the already transformed array. And now we're going to hit apply. And now we have a lovely clean array. We may have to get rid of some extra commas here, but that can happen later. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an array elements to columns. So the array is going to be transform array element. So we're going to be extracting six columns here. So one is going to be salt concentration. We're going to be adding six of these. And now we're going to have all of our transmittance values. So transmittance, trial one, copy, paste that. Transmittance trial two, copy, paste that. Transmittance trial three, copy, paste. Transmittance trial four, transmittance trial five. Very good. And now we're going to hit apply. And now, of course, we can do some additional cleaning if you need to say cast these to numbers or get rid of any sort of other leading spaces or formatting. But most importantly, let's just get rid of all these extra columns here. Now, before we clean these numbers up, because they clearly need some cleaning, we're going to get rid of all those other columns. So we're going to hit select columns, and we're going to be selecting salt concentration trial one, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to hit apply. And there we go. So now we're going to take an operation to clean up these values because we need to remove commas and then cast these to doubles. So we're going to use the apply to multiple columns operation, which essentially operates like a for loop. So we're going to be saying for each column that is in the set, one, two, three, four, five. And let's reorder these also. So for all of these columns, we're going to do something. And so the expression that we're going to apply is going to be a cast. Now we're going to be casting these to a double, but before we do that, we're going to have actually a nested expression here. So we're going to search for regex replace. And so the expression is going to be operating on the column. The pattern that we're going for is going to be a comma. We're replacing it with nothing. And also the cast. For the cast, make sure the type is not a date, but a double. And now we're going to hit apply. And now we have lovely numbers. We might want to reorder these columns, but otherwise we have clean data. The data looks correct. And now we're ready to deploy an output. So hit apply all and then close. Now we're going to hit add output, new data set. Call this table extracted from image. And now we're going to hit save and deploy and then deploy. And now once we deploy this, the data set will be ready to use. And that concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.